Okay, so I am here with ASAP from, or formerly from Rooster, I don't know, maybe that's a discussion that we will have throughout this conversation. And we're here to talk about this whole um, betting thing that went down uh, in the earlier stages or later stages of last week. It was the AU MDL betting thing that ESIC has announced that they've banned seven players from the AU scene for 12 months for. So... ASAP, you actually reached out to me and you wanted to have a discussion about this. And this is, you know, it's a little bit interesting for me because it's not normal for players, I would say, to reach out to someone like me to come on to a show like this. Normally, I have to try and convince people to come on because, you know, people generally don't tend to want to do video interviews and that kind of thing. So I think what's important before we sort of get into this discussion really is to actually let people know who you are because you're not a player that has played internationally so obviously everyone from ANZ would know who you are but for anyone that's watching this from overseas you know maybe good to define exactly who you are in the context of this whole thing and why it's relevant for you to sort of give your opinion on this um the the quick broad strokes are that you are a teammate or maybe a former teammate of the players ADK Netic and JHD who at some times played on Rooster or were still currently playing on Rooster when this ban was handed down. You yourself have not been banned by E6. So do you want to give us a, maybe a little bit of an introduction or I guess any any other broad strokes that you want to hit before we dive into this interview? Um, I guess I'm just like a young player, 17, just been working my way out with Rooster and that's it. Like just playing with the boys. Like I had a shorter like stint back when they were Mad Light Wizards mm -hmm. for like a little bit with Chelios and ADK and jhd but um then they like reformed the lineup and then i came back like uh like in march this year something like that and then i've been with them since then yeah so it's obviously been a fair fair while for you playing with these yeah. guys yeah so and, like I, I know them as well like like outside the game mm -hmm. so like i keep up with it awesome okay so obviously that's why you know uh, i think people would be quite interested to hear from you uh it's almost like I don't want to say like you're on the other side, right? Because there's a lot of people that would be very, I guess, anti-Rooster, anti all of these banned players yeah. at the moment. Uh, so at least in that sense, you are from the Rooster camp. And I think it's quite interesting to hear your opinion. Before we get into all of that and all those questions and stuff, which by the way, if you're interested in just jumping forward, you don't uh, need to get an understanding of exactly what is happening here. Or maybe you've read all of the the press releases and stuff from ESIC yourself, because that's what we'll talk about for the next five minutes or so. You can jump ahead. There'll be um, timestamps in the description and whatever to anything you're interested in. But before we get there to all those questions, I do want to sort of just uh, define exactly what has gone on here um, because I think a lot of people probably just jump into this with a bit of a, I hate these guys, like fuck these guys, fuck these match fixes, whatever, which isn't necessarily the case. Uh, so what's important to look at is first, if you haven't read the ESIC announcement, you probably should go and read that. But uh, I've I've sort of got a few of the key points to hit here in that seven of the players were banned or sanctioned for 12 months. So that would mean that they can't play in any ESIC competitions. It's nothing to do with Valve or anything like that. It's not like a quote-unquote official ban, um, like what you would have seen from the I by Power stuff. And those players were STVN, ADK, Maker, Netic, JD, Rackham, and JHD. These players supposedly placed bets on MDL matches, including their own games. Uh, apparently, they also might have had associates who placed bets on these matches with details potentially still uh, to be revealed regarding that. And that's still, a, as far as I can see, under discussion or under investigation. Apparently, ESIC has also referred this matter to law enforcement. So that would be, I guess, the Australian police and the New Zealand police, because uh, some of these guys are from New Zealand as well. Uh, and the ban was not for match fixing, uh, at least as far as I understand, only for betting. But there is also apparently an investigation still underway regarding the uh, match fixing di discussion or situation, although it's not necessarily with these players, as I understand. Uh, there was something here, uh, you know, that I did want to quote from the ESIC article, and it was regarding that match fixing thing, because again... Like I said, it wasn't this ban in particular, the one that we're discussing today, isn't necessarily in relation to a match fix. 
It says, however, ESIC notes that the outcomes in this case do not exclude the possibility of additional outcomes relating to the offending parties and their respective teams and associates. So that seems to me to imply that there could be something else that they're sort of digging through ASAP and that that may eventually come through later on in the piece. Either way, I think that's a very, you know, across the board kind of a, an idea of what we're talking about here. Do you think there was anything that I missed from from your perspective or is that more or less everything that we nah, need to talk that's, about? Nah, that's covered everything. There's okay. not really anything else. All right, so then we can maybe get into the sort of discussion about, you know, what your thoughts are on this and, and where things sit. So I guess the first thing that we wanted to discuss here, and especially this is the main reason that you wanted to come on to this and talk to me about this was the question around match fixing. So I'll just go out and straight up ask you, you know, did, did you and Rooster or anyone on your team, as far as you're aware, match fix any of these games? Nah, we, we never fix the game. That's not what like we're about. We're just young kids trying to play the game. Money was never like a big deal. We, we, you know, it's not a big conspiracy where we organized games with other people and put bets on and made big money. Like it was just stupid gambling from ADK and Netic. Like they just put money on games and they thought it would just be like, you know, easy way to get a little bit of money on the side. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, we aren't, we aren't pro players. We're not making a salary. We're not getting big prize pool money and like, we're still kids, like Akram's at work, Netic's at school still, me and Danny are still at school, stuff like that. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess that is something that I want to talk about as well when we get a little bit further into this as to why these guys might have actually gone for these bets. But first I want to sort of, I mean, this is kind of hard, right? Because it's all, it almost feels like I'm taking a shot at you and I'm taking a shot at Rooster, which it obviously isn't necessarily meant to be the case. But I think there is a very negative community perception of Rooster based on some of the social media presence, some of the players, you know, how they act and stuff in like pugs and that kind of thing. So can you maybe understand why people might have jumped on this like I hate Rooster bandwagon initially? I can I can definitely understand why people would hate us. Like... You know, there's a lot to hate about us, but like we're not we're not going out there trying to make people hate us. We're not trying to make a like a negative presence in the community. I think some people just think they should be respected more than they deserve. And like, you know, talking smack in the game and like in pugs and stuff like that, it's always been part of the game for us. And I think it will always come with like high competition stuff, like even in normal sports stuff like that. Like I've I played soccer outside of Counter Strike and. You know, there's always, you know, you're talking shit on the field and stuff like that. It's just part of competition, I guess. Yep. Okay. And relating to this particular ban for these seven players, do you think this was, was this in any way related to that uh, match fixing discussion that was happening like nine or, or six months ago? Do you remember the one that I'm talking about? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's got nothing to do with that. It's like a whole different, like, it's a whole different ban. Like, betting offenses is completely different than match fixing. And, like, we know, obviously, who the people are that got banned, but we're not, like, related to them. They don't, like, you know, they've never played for Rooster or anything like that. Yeah, okay. And that's not really a discussion that I want to, to get into either because, you know, obviously it's unrelated, as you say. So, okay, first we've established that Rooster and, you know, these guys didn't match fix, at least as far as you say. Although, again, like I said, you are biased, I guess. So we do have to remember yeah. that. Um, but I want to get into this discussion then about how you know, what was the mindset, I guess, of the guys that were, were placing the bets? And and again, like we've already uh, established, you yourself didn't place any, or again, you weren't banned for it. So can you maybe let me know why you, and obviously it wasn't your entire team. So why, why have you personally decided not to place bets on this? Was this maybe something that you expected to come sometime down the track if bets were placed on, you know, your own league or something like that? Or was it maybe you just don't gamble or what's the reasoning for that? Yeah, I just, I just don't gamble personally. It's never been, like, something I'm interested in. Like, Danny and Chell, you know, they just didn't bet because they didn't feel like doing it. Like, ADK Kinetic, they just, like like I said before, it's just, like, an easy easy way to get a little bit of money. And, you know, they they gamble. <laughs> yeah, clearly. But, like, yeah, there's, there's no games they bet on where they knew the result, like, 100% before they bet. And they definitely didn't win, like, any big amount of money. And even, like, JHD, who, like, you know, I talk to a lot, he, he lost money betting on the league, like, overall. Like, it's not like, 
a lot of people think we just made like big bank and you know we've gotten away with a 12 month ban but like it really wasn't any big amount of money and like you know josh lost money so okay uh do you want to give us an idea of how much money might have been getting thrown around here was it like thousands of dollars hundreds of dollars nah, or? not even not even close like just a couple hundred maybe like okay. a couple skins stuff like that from websites yeah because i've seen a, a lot of like uh you know betters a lot of betters like dm me you know because i'm someone that casts games and they'll send me like oh who do you think's gonna win this or who do you think's gonna win that and then after the game they'll screenshot whatever their winnings are and they'll send me you know <laughs> oh, i won like ten thousand dollars on this game and i'm just thinking like you're fucking crazy betting that amount yeah, uh, yeah on this that... kind of game but anyway like i guess the implication is that betters or the assumption rather is that betters that are putting money into these kinds of bets would be betting like tens of thousands of dollars. So I guess, again, like you've said, maybe that isn't the case. So even if it isn't that much money, really, there's, a, I think, a fair amount of good reasons that... Like, I say good reasons. I guess I'm not really trying to justify necessarily what they've done here, but I think you have to understand it from the other side as well. I think a lot of people yeah. are very biased in their opinions and they're very, very difficult to... Uh, I guess, have a conversation with in regards to something like this. And like, while I don't necessarily agree with what, you know, these guys have done, I can understand it from, from their perspective. And that's something that I always like to try and think like, is like, okay, I'm in an argument or I'm in a discussion. What is it like for the other side? Why do they feel that? Why have they done that? And in this respect, I think there's a few reasons why a lot of those players might have gone and bet on their own games or bet on some of the the league games that they had a bit of a better understanding as to why uh, as to what the result would be sorry so you sort of mentioned a couple of them earlier right that you guys are not a professional team that you're not salaried as far as i understand that you're all sort of working and going to school and stuff and you're playing counter-strike so is that primarily the reason like was that primarily primarily the reason for these guys did they just want to get a bit of extra cash when they weren't necessarily a salaried team or something like that? Like the infrastructure wasn't there to support them in their career as a Counter-Strike player? I don't think like when like they needed to bet to like support their Counter-Strike career or anything like that. I don't think the money was the problem. I think that they just like gambling, they like betting and stuff like that. I don't know. It's not like we didn't have enough money to, you know, support us or pay entry fees and stuff like that. It, it wasn't like we needed the money for sure. Okay. Do you, I mean, I, this is sort of an aside, right? But I've always been interested myself personally. So for Rooster as a team and as an, as an org, I suppose it's like, it's a player run org, right? Like you don't have, a, yeah. it's not really like an org org. Yeah, so, it's not like a, it's not a professional org. Like we don't have any financial backing behind us. We like provide the server, team speak, entry fees and everything for us. All right. So why have you never been with an orc as a, as a team, you know, because I look at that roster and I think, well, that was easily a top, at least a top five roster, let's say. My personal opinion is that you were a top four roster, but why why would a top four or top five roster never be able to get an org or did you ever even, even want an org? And I think there's, again, a few obvious answers in that, you know, the, the whole social media presence was probably an issue for a lot of the top orgs, but... You know, I think if that was cleaned up, there's no reason not to pick a roster, at least skills-wise, like you guys up. So is that something you guys just didn't want? You didn't want an org or? I think, like, we started the team with these, like, five players and we wanted to keep it that way. Like, I think the only way an org would be picking us up is if, like, they took individual players and poached them and, like, joined other teams. Like, I don't think any big organizations would want to take a chance on five young players like us with no, like, proven experience on land of big events regardless of like the results and the ranking in the region i think covid's definitely affected it we had like a couple offers before that like outside of australia but like i just think even if we were out here you know being respectful on twitter and stuff like that streaming all the time and you know not being how we are with that native community presence i still don't think an organization would want to pick us up and like we don't want to sign a big contract for an org if we're not getting like a decent salary and, you know, it's a decent org and stuff like that. Okay. That's surprising to me because I'm not sure that I'm on the same, uh, of the same opinion as you, I think. At least nowadays, maybe. Um, again, the social media presence and stuff notwithstanding, I think at least as far as the team is concerned and the level at which you play at, I think you could 
definitely be quite interesting to an org, although that may be for like a tier two org or something like that. I guess it depends on what you're kind of looking for from an org. Like you say, if it's maybe like a tier one org that is going to be paying you a good salary, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not in, I'm not necessarily in that game, so I don't necessarily know, but I'm surprised that you feel that way and that the team feels that way personally. Um, okay, so back onto this whole uh, betting discussion and this ESIC thing. Uh, are you are you personally and any of the players on your team aware of Valve's stance on betting? Because they did release that announcement, uh, you know, it must have been like now a year and a half, two years ago, that it was essentially like, it wasn't like you must not bet. It was a strongly worded, this is our guidance as anyone that is involved in Counter-Strike Esports not to bet on any of their esport games. Yeah, like, like we... None of us had ever read that. ADK and Attic definitely didn't know about it. And like betting on anything CS related is a pretty like gray line. I'm not sure like, you know, how specific that is and stuff like that, but they definitely didn't know much about it. Okay. Because that for me personally, you know, obviously as a caster and someone that, you know, does a lot of work with Encounter Strike Esports, it's always been something that I had in the back of my mind in that, like, I actually used to bet skins back in the day, you know, on CSGO Lounge and whatever. I think everyone yeah. really did at that time. <laughs> um, I never really made a whole lot of money, unfortunately. But for most people, like, once that announcement came out, I, knew, yeah, I know there was a lot of top casters, top players, etc., that were betting skins and stuff like that, that once that announcement came out, they were like, okay, well, like, now's the time to stop. You know, we've gotten away with it for a little while, but now it's time to sort of reel things back on in. So I guess maybe that didn't connect with the, uh, you know, the Aussie boys. Um, I'm also interested to know if there was ever a expectation within the team that something like this would actually happen, you know, particularly for those two guys. Like, did they ever think like, you know, maybe this is a little bit unethical and if someone does do a little bit of digging, are we going to get caught? I think, like, they definitely thought it was a little bit unethical. Like, just, like, we never talked about it publicly, of course. But, like, that's that's as deep as we thought it would ever be. Like, we're just betting on games in the league. It's just nothing, like, that big of a deal. And we definitely think it wouldn't lead to, like, a 12-month ban or anything like that. Yeah, so, more or less, it's kind of like, the way that you see it or the way that they saw it is like, okay, we're just guys, like, betting on this game. Like, it's not that big of a deal sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. How old are these guys, by the way? Uh, Netic's 17, ADK's 19, I think. I think that's important context as well because... You know, I guess as you get older, you tend to get a little bit wiser to the ways of the world. Uh, anyway, let's move into uh, a bit more of like, it's almost like a match fixing discussion. But again, as we said, we have established that you have not match fixed. Uh, and it's like, it's, it's kind of hard. I don't want to sort of necessarily bandy that word around, but I guess it is what it is in this kind of situation. So my main question here is like, first, did these guys bet on any of your own games? Like, did they bet on Rooster games? Not that I know of specifically. Like, they never told me, you know, before a game, hey, we bet on this game, mm -hmm. we have to play well. And, it, like, I never, you know, I never noticed them playing weirdly because they might have a bet on it or something. Like, I'm pretty sure most of the time it was just on other games. Okay. Like, it was, wasn't was a lot of games that we played in. All right. Regardless of that, then, let's just assume that they may have bet on their own games at some point and not informed you. But... Do you think that as a player, right, if you were to have bet on your own game, regardless of whether or not it's a match fix, would that affect your performance? And how, how would that affect your performance? Like, how would that affect your mindset going into the game, knowing that you put money on... Let's say you put money on yourself to win, right? How does that affect you as a player? Um, Like, obviously, I wouldn't know, but I don't know. Like, people have told me before games, like, I've got money on you, you know, you got to perform tonight. Mm -hmm. And it's never really affected me. It's not changed my mindset coming into the game or anything like that. I never noticed Netico ADK, like, playing weirdly, acting weirdly, because they might have money on the game, anything like that. Okay. Yeah, it's an interesting thing, isn't it, right? Because I think, obviously, if you bet on your opponent, that then instantly becomes a match yeah. fix. But it's like, it's a bit of a grey area then as well, if you bet on yourself. Technically, like, you should be going into that game to perform to the best of your abilities, which, yeah. theoretically, if you've got money on yourself, you would be doing anyway, even if it does feel a little bit unethical because I guess you have, like, insider information, and that's the other thing. It's like, you as players, and even myself and anyone involved in Counter-Strike, 
ESL tournament operators, admins, uh, you know, whoever it might be that's running the ESCA brackets or whatever, like setting them up to begin with, is going to inherently have some sort of uh, some sort of extra information that the public wouldn't have, and therefore it's sort of unethical to to ban. So uh, to to bet on these games, I should say, and that's why they've probably received this ban. So. It's kind of, it's kind of, yeah. Like I said, it's like a gray area. You're not necessarily throwing per se, but it is still a bit of uh, a bit of a how you go in kind of a moment. Anyway, uh, you know, there was a few people that tweeted as well since this came out that there was a few names missing from that list, or perhaps a lot of names missing from that list. So again, I'm not really in this circle. Like I'm not in the circle of players so much. I don't necessarily talk to players outside of interviews. All that often so it's not something that i have heard of uh personally but i assume you know you're obviously a little bit more ingrained in the scene than i am have you heard of anyone else or are you aware of more people having put bets on their the league or their own games that weren't uh named in this seven i'm i don't know specific names but there definitely is and there easily could be a lot of people doing it for sure mm, okay how widespread do you think that would actually be within AUCS? I don't think it'd be like every team's doing it or like every second team's doing it, but I think there might be like a you know a couple more people doing it that go away with it. But okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Sure. And on the topic of your teammates as well, do you know if any of them have actually appealed these bans or have they just sort of copped it? I think we're trying to appeal at the moment. I'm not sure like what we could do. I don't know if we could get the sentence like reduced or something like that. I like we'd we'd love to do anything. We'd love to do community work like fines i don't know anything like to make it a bit shorter okay because 12 months is a long time for us interesting do you know what that appeal process is like do they just contact ESIC and then sort of go through that or what i'm pretty sure we just contact ESIC and like you know give them our situation and what happened and you know see what we can do about it all right but well, then i think like it's important to like like let people know that ESIC in the announcement say that they notified us before the ban was made public and they didn't email us or we didn't get any message we found out about the ban on twitter while doing vetoes for a qualifier i think that's like really like unprofessional from them and that like you know it ruins our reputation before we even get the chance to appeal for it like that is interesting i didn't know about that although you know this is gonna be a bit of a shot but some people might say your reputation was already ruined um yeah. but anyway um look i guess that is an interesting point. I don't know how did did they receive emails later on in the piece or no? Like we've so got, got no absolutely nothing communication. Yeah, no, no official communication from them at all. We just found out about the ban from HLTV, which is just ridiculous. Like, all right. Well, then that leads me into my next question, which is: Are the bans fair? Because that's you know obviously a bit of a touching point. Some people, and I think it seems like the the community consensus may be internationally at least is that the bans are not fair in that they're not harsh enough right because i think a lot of people are drawing parallels to what happened with the i by power situation and the fact that they were banned quote unquote permanently you know by ESIC eventually they actually got unbanned after like two and a half years or something like that but they're still valve banned so yeah they're done basically but i think it is a different situation right yeah like it's a completely different situation and that's why like, I'm not happy with what ASIC's done. Because on this announcement, you know, it's just match-fixing MDO investigation, seven players banned. Like, that that's just calling us match-fixers when it's, you know, it's betting offences. Even on Liquipedia, it had, you know, banned for match-fixing, which they've changed now. But, like, putting that label on us is just terrible for our reputation, even if it was bad before. You know, it's basically calling us match-fixers when we've never had anything to do with that. And, like, with the bans, I don't think, like, exactly what happened matches the punishment. Like, I don't know. We're we're up for doing anything to, like, shorten it. And betting on, like, games in the league with inside information is, like, a pretty blurred line that ASIC could bend to fit whatever they want. Like, but, you know, again, like, Nedic and ADK regret it a lot. And, you know, that I'm not justifying what they did. They know it's wrong. We know it's wrong. And, you know, we're up to serve the time. It's fine. It's it's a bit of a hard thing for me to say, right? Because, again, like, I don't really know which side of the coin I sort of sit on here. 
Um, I understand that these guys are young kids and, you know, they're not earning a lot of money from Counter-Strike, blah, blah, blah. But on the same token, if this was a professional sporting environment and, you, you know, these players were found to be betting on their own games, I think that the whole the book would be thrown at them. I mean, this is a situation that apparently has been referred to law enforcement. I don't know what's going to come from that. I don't know what the precedent is with that either. Um, or what the legalities are around betting on tournaments that you're playing in, regardless of whether or not you're betting on your own matches. But I think, legally speaking, it is a fairly egregious thing to be doing. So I guess that's something that we're going to find out over the next six or 12 months or so. So I guess then the next sort of discussion topic would be, what is your intention as an individual and what is the intention of Rooster now that these players are banned? Let's assume first that they're banned for 12 months and this whole appeal process doesn't go through. Are you intending to continue playing Counter-Strike? Are you intending to continue to play with the remaining Rooster players? And where do you sort of go from here? I think mean, I'll definitely keep playing Counter-Strike. Like, I love playing Counter-Strike and, you know, this 12-month ban's not going to stop you. But I can't really say right now what we're going to do exactly. But I want to stay with the team. Like... If it wasn't for Chelios, I wouldn't be playing the game, let alone competitively. And I couldn't thank him enough and the team for like the experience they gave me and like the group of friends they've been for me outside of the game and stuff like that. Playing with them's like amazing. I've never had like the belief that they've gave me and I'm so glad like I got to play with them in my first year of like high tier counter strike, even though it's like in Australia. But um for now, like I'll just keep working on getting better myself while having a bit of time you know, to enjoy my social life and graduate school and all that, but we'll definitely be back. Okay. I, I think I have an understanding of what uh, your answer will be for this one based on some of your previous comments, but will the players that were banned from your team, I mean, are, are you going to welcome them back with op open arms per se, or are you s essentially going to blacklist them and, and you say you don't want to play with them anymore? Yeah, we, we, we don't hate them. Like, they're still like our best mates. Like, we know them in real life outside the game. It's not like we're just going to hate them for what they did. Obviously, it's wrong. But they know that. Like, they obviously regret it. But yeah, they'll definitely be back. Okay. And then this one, the final question, maybe a bit of a difficult one to answer is, I guess, based on some of the reactions from the players that we've seen on Twitter, uh, it seems that there's, quote unquote, no remorse. And maybe there's nothing to be remorseful for. Maybe there is. But... What's your opinion on that whole situation? You know, do you think that they could have maybe just laid low a little bit? I think, yeah, they, they could have laid low and not, like, had those replies. But I don't think it's out of pocket. Like, people are saying some crazy stuff on Twitter. And, like, they're just replying like that because of, like, how crazy it is. You know, people call us match fixes and saying we should be banned permanently and stuff like that. It's not even close to that. The whole si No one really reads into the situation before they just, you know, talk shit all over Twitter. and. Stuff like that just, you know, pisses them off. But, you know, I don't really want to reply to people on Twitter. I don't think it's a big deal. I don't care what they think. And, yeah, they can just do whatever they like, I guess. All right. Well, I'm going to say that will be the end of the interview. So I very much appreciate your time, ASAP. I think it's important for you and for the team as well to sort of get their opinion across. Now, the one thing I will say is that I think, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that aren't convinced. So I want to give you the opportunity to, you know, say your final thoughts and if for anyone that you know may not be convinced what what do you have to say to them uh you know anyone that's maybe throwing shade at you guys and at the players and what have you that they're still sort of you know giving you shit what would you have to say to those people i guess like just people need to see it from our point of view like we're a bunch of young kids like from where we see it we didn't affect the integrity of the league we never we never affected the results of the games we played in we never fixed anything like that and you know, it's just some little stupid thing, stupid gambling, Akram and Corey, you know, just being idiots and stuff like that. Obviously, people aren't going to believe us. That's just how it is and because of how we acted before. But I think that's like, you know, people are never going to believe us. And now that like E6 made this so like high profile and public, we're never going to be able to get away from that label of match fixers because of what they've done. But that's just, we're going to deal with it and just come back stronger, really. Grace and time.